Hello, and welcome to Your Sparkly Brand. We're here to inspire and empower female entrepreneurs like you. This podcast is all about delivering no fluff, high value content that helps you grow your business. It doesn't matter if you have no budget and are still DIYing everything on your own. We're giving you the tips, tools, and strategies you need to build a sparkly empire. I'm Lauren Tassi, a copywriter and launch strategist, and I'm here with my co-host and branding, marketing, and web design expert, Megan Gersh. Hey, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So we are super excited to introduce our guest today, Christina Lankowski. Super, super excited to have you on today. Christina is a forward-thinking podcast publicist and educator for entrepreneurs, speakers, and authors. These people are looking to expand their credibility online and become go from the best-kept secret to the go-to expert. So she has been in the PR world for over 13 years, and she has been on over 30 podcasts. She's discovered what being a guest on a podcast did for her own online business. And now she is sharing all of the tools, tips, and secrets with business owners to get them the same results. So welcome to your sparkly brand, Christina. So excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so, so pumped to be here. I was sharing with both Megan and Lauren before we hopped on that I was listening to a really awesome episode with Roz Crowd right before we hopped on today. And I just love the message that you guys put out there and, you know, kind of getting out there in front of solopreneurs and women entrepreneurs that, you know, are are doing the dang thing. So I'm excited to, uh, to talk talk today about how podcasts might be able to help them. Awesome. Yeah, that's such a great episode. If, if folks that are listening haven't checked out that episode, make sure you do so because Roz seriously brought the value on that one. Agreed. So Christina, before we jump into your story, something that we'd like to do mm-hmm. on every single episode is just to share our sparkly moment of the week. So this is our something, a little celebration or something that made us feel a little sparkly and special during the week. So just because we feel like as business owners, we don't share those wins enough. So Lauren, do you want to kick things off? Do you have a sparkling moment you want to share? Yeah. So I, I had three discovery calls with new potential clients this week. And I just realized Ooh. that like, they're all doing such cool and different things. And I just feel like if those are the people I get to talk to every day, and like, those are who my clients are going to be, I am super excited about the future of my business. So that was kind of a, when you realize it, you don't always realize that stuff, but when you can realize it, that that's the win for sure. Awesome. What about you, Meg? So I have just partnered up with a brand new tool where I'm going to be working with them. It's essentially like a a LinkedIn bio kind of styled tool. It's called Stan, but basically it's it's kind of like LinkedIn bio meets a funnel. And so they have collapsed all of the steps that it would take in order to book you like, like let's say one-on-one for like a coaching call or something like that, but it's like a one page checkout. So you click the LinkedIn bio, you you select the coaching call that you want to book and it's all right there. There's reviews, there's, you know, the, the time slot that you want for the actual booking. It's all on one page. It's super cool. So um, just was working with them a bit this week and kicking things off with them. So super excited for that. That's that sounds awesome. super cool. I'm excited to learn more about that. Yeah, I can, I can add a link for you guys in the show notes. And Christina, do you have a sparkling moment that you want to share? You know, I do. I thought about it today, <laughs> you know, was thinking about what I would share for my sparkly moment of the week. And for me personally, um, I'm doing my only live training for the public tomorrow that I'll do all year. And so I have been getting a ton of questions and things like that. And I just love, love, love when people reach out to me and, you know, are kind of asking if they think podcast coaching is, is something they should be doing in their marketing and what those first steps are. So for me, I'm, I'm really excited to do the training tomorrow. If anyone's listening in later, don't worry, you can, you can get the recording, but you know, I'm excited to do it live and be updating that training for 2022. Awesome. Can't wait to hear about it. Yeah. It's called, Hey bitch, let's pitch. So that's an example of a kind of humor, what I try to bring to the table. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally up our alley. That is welcome here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So Christina, let's get into it. Why don't you start a little by telling us your story? How did you come to start your business? Yeah, definitely. So I've been, as Megan mentioned, been in PR for almost 15 years, the world of PR and marketing. I almost, one thing I really related to, I feel like I'm just really promoting your Roz Crowd episode, but because I just listened to it, it's just very top of mind. But like her, I also traveled for quite a while, kind of wanted to seek that adventure in life, you know, all that good stuff. And so I did that after college. And when I came home, I had had my degree was in journalism. So originally that was what I thought I was going to go into like working in the media, being a copywriter, you know, copy editor, that type of stuff. And at the time that I came back home and I was like, all right, now I got to like get insurance and like start my life. And you know, that type of thing. I ended up getting offered a position in the publicity department of Dark Horse Comics, which is a huge comics publisher based outside of my hometown of Portland, Oregon. And so I started 
started working with them and it really introduced me to the world of PR. And for me, that was a really great blend of my skills because I love to write. I have that media background, things like that, but I'm very, very social. So when I was also offered a job as a copy editor at the same time for a paper, I was like, no, it was just one of those moments in your life where you're like, I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's really going to work for me. So I went the publicity route, went the PR route and really haven't looked back from there. So for a long time, I worked for different companies, different agencies, doing public relations and marketing, big companies like Cirque du Soleil down to small like mom and pop tourism entities and stuff like that, which is what led me to, after I had my daughter in 2014, start my own company. And that was focused on tourism, public relations, like tourism media coverage. And so I started that in, I think, 2016. And I did all the things. I did what all the, you know, kind of big name gurus at the time were telling to do. Like, I was like, oh, I should start a course. Oh, then I should do a membership. Like all these things that I like thought I should be doing. And even though I taught publicity, I did no publicity for my course that I launched because no one was really talking about it at that time. Everything was kind of ads and webinars into funnels and this and that. That's not to say those things don't work. It's just to say that publicity specifically wasn't really a part of that conversation. And so anyways, long story short, it was a huge flop for me. My first course, things like that, the first time I launched. And I was like, all right, the next time I launch, I'm going to do this my way. (laughs) And so this was in like 2018, early 2019, I started booking myself on podcasts. I started pitching to podcasts, researching, doing all this stuff and started guesting on podcasts. And the difference that I saw in my business was amazing. You know, I had people that were reaching out to me about doing consulting. I had people that were just going to the website and buying, you know, directly from me right off the bat because they felt like they knew me. And so that's kind of what started my head thinking, like maybe there is an avenue for me to more so talk about publicity as opposed to just specifically tourism. And then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, I saw the writing on the wall with tourism. And I was like, this is not going to go great. (laughs) And so I, at that point was like, all right, it kind of gave me that shove to kind of pivot into doing the podcast world and focusing on that. My business has grown from there. I started out originally with training people how to do their own podcast pitching, but eventually I just had so many people reach out to me like, could you just do it? That is what I built an agency around. So now we have an agency and, you know, contractors and all that type of stuff that we pitched on behalf of awesome, what we call underrepresented entrepreneurs. So women, members of the LGBTQ community, members of the BIPOC community, we really, really try to get those voices out into the world. So I, what I love about your story is how you just kind of pivot and then you pivot and you pivot. And I feel like that's something that I have done so many times. It's like, how many businesses have you had, you know? And I think that's (laughs) just like what it means means to be an entrepreneur, right? Is you go, oh, COVID's happening. Tourism does not look like a good place. I want to be working right now. So, hey, podcasts, you don't even have to leave your house, you know? So I love that. I love the, just that sort of through line in your story that you always, you're always pivoting. You're always going towards what excites you. Yes. What excites me and what people are clearly needing. I think it's important to, to recognize that, you know, I was doing this training and that was good, but my business wouldn't be anywhere near it was if I would just continue going on that path, more people wanted me to do that thing. Now I'm good with doing that thing. But when I first started, I was like, very much like, no, no, no. Like I only teach like courses and I only do this. And like, you want me to work for you? Like, no way. And then I realized, yeah, way. And that that was something that I could be doing. And, you know, and I thought, I think that that's important to recognize too, is like, as long as it's something you're good with doing, it's also important to realize what the customer is asking for. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like we have heard so many of these types of stories, especially in COVID where like, you know, you have a certain demand for like a certain type of service. And it's like, well, I guess this is needed over here. Like, I guess we're (laughs) gonna go that way, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I know that you have mentioned stepping into the sustainable spotlight. So can you explain a little bit about what that means and why it's important? Yeah, absolutely. We kind of talk about podcast guesting in our business as stepping into your sustainable 
spotlight. And what that means is podcast guesting or really any kind of publicity work or really any marketing work you're doing, should it be a one-time thing? So sometimes people tend to think, especially with publicity, they kind of will come to me and be like, oh, well, I'm launching in May. And so I'd love to do a bunch of podcasts that are all going to drop in April, you know, that type of thing. And what I have to say to people at that point, because they just don't understand, is that that's not really how the how podcasting works. You know, what I can't necessarily like ask to specifically work around a guest schedule. I mean, maybe if you're like a very big person that, you know, like, I guess like Pat Flynn or any poor or something like that, I'd be able to work a little bit of magic around that. But for the most part, it's not going to be something that I'm able to plan to that degree. Like when we work with our, we work with them for six months at a time. And what we do guarantee during those six months is booking. So we guarantee a certain number of bookings during that time. But the interviews may very well take place later than that. Like right now, now we're even booking clients. Like we just had one book yesterday for a September interview, which means that the show might not even be out for a month or two after that. So that's just something that I like people to keep in mind is like, this isn't a turnaround thing. And that's kind of why we say this sustainable spotlight. Is this the stuff you're going to do over time, over and over again? That's going to elevate your name. It's going to build that credibility. It's going to bring people to you and you need to be using it and looking at it as evergreen content, as opposed to like something you're just going to do a big, huge, like one-time push for and then never use again. It's like any kind of marketing, right? You just have to be consistent mm-hmm. and then it works. Yep. If you just sort of go, okay, I'm in crunch time now. Now, now I'm going to post on social media, but then when things slow down, if you're, you know, letting that stuff go, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's, it's, yeah, you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent with it. And and also keep your expectations realistic, you know, make sure that you're getting on shows that are full of your ideal customer and not necessarily just looking for what you consider the biggest shows. I think that's a big thing that I talk with people about a lot. Like I'll be on a discovery call with someone and they'll be like, yeah, I don't know. Like maybe I just want to get on like Joe Rogan's podcast or something. <laughs> now this was all before the big Spotify thing, but you know, I'm like, I'm like, is Joe Rogan your ideal audience? And you know, to them, all they're thinking is he has a big show. That's a big show. That's a show that people know about, you know, da, da, da. And so that's why I always like kind of steer people back again. Who is that ideal customer? Not how big is this show? I'd always rather get into the earbuds of 50 or a hundred of my ideal customers, as opposed to 10,000 people that don't give a crap what I have to say. Yeah, for sure. And I can tell you too, like Lauren and I have gotten pitches before where like we go to look at the email and it's like, did you even listen to the show? Like, this is like far off, like left field. I'm like, you're just like mass emailing people, some people out there are at least like sending out just like mass pitches, I'm guessing. Not some, most. And what we call it is the spray and pray method. You know, (laughs) you send out a hundred emails, you hope that maybe a couple of them say yes, you know, something like that. And that's actually the reason why we have a guarantee in our agency. It's because of that. You know, I can tell you all day that I could send out 50 pitches, a hundred pitches, but what is the result, right? Like, what is it that it's going to get you on? That's very important to me as something really unique about our agency. But absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of people out there that just like want to hit the check marks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to send pitches. So I'm just going to go send a bunch of pitches and they're just going to be copy and pasted. It doesn't really matter. Like I'm not looking at the show. I mean, I'm sure you guys have even gotten where it's like, hello host, you know, or whatever. Like they don't even take the two seconds to look and find your first names. And so I think as a listener, that's really, really important for you to think about is like, if you don't take that time, a host is like, at least a host worth their salt, isn't going to respond to you. Yeah. I think customization when it comes to pitching anything is so important. What are some other things Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs can be doing to get themselves booked on podcasts? Yeah. I mean, I think we just talked about the customization and sometimes when I talk about that, people get really like, that's so much time, you know, that's so much, whatever, especially on something that I don't know is a sure thing. So what I teach in my like, Hey bitch, let's pitch training. And what I talk about when I'm on podcasts, there is power. And what I recommend is in creating a pitch template for yourself. So what that means is that you have like a Google doc that essentially has 90% of your pitch written, like your credibility markers. It has some solid topic ideas that you could pick a couple of based on the show. It has all that stuff in there that like you're going to use the same for every single pitch. And then you're going to customize the very top. And I usually put a customized PS at the bottom. I even did this in my pitch to Megan. So Megan and I were both on like the anti-hustler holiday with the MSC more, which was super fun. And so that's how I came across you guys' show. And I looked at 
about it and stuff like that. And so I customized the first paragraph, like, cause I, you know, taken a look at the show and listened to it a little bit and stuff like that. But what I also did is in the PS, I went into her social media. I saw she had a big gift versus GIF thing going on over there about what she preferred. And I agree with her on her hard take that it is GIF. I am a hundred percent in camp GIF. And so I wrote that as like a little PS at the bottom of the email. Now that might seem like, like you're like, yeah, does the host really, like, they don't care. They do care. Like that is the type of thing that shows that you took the time to go and look and just see what they're all about, what they have going on. You know, I looked through her social just to see, I'm not like going to stalk her. I'm like, how was your trip to Hawaii? I really look like you had a really nice day on Tuesday. Like, I mean, I'm not like anything like that. I'm not trying to get weird about it, but like if they have something up on their social that I genuinely have a reaction to, then that's something that I can easily put into a pitch. But 90% of that pitch that I sent is already done. And so I think that that's super, super important to, to know is that like, you don't have to be recreating the wheel every time, because I think that's something that really gets people up in their head. Yeah, definitely. And one other thing I wanted to ask about too, is like, what about like one sheets? Because I know that a lot of folks that have pitched us have sent one sheets. Do you think that they're important? Are they irrelevant? Let me know your thoughts. I do have a strong take on one sheets. So I will, I will get into that, but I would, then I would love to hear you guys in on it because maybe as hosts, you feel a little bit different, but for me, I think they're great, nice to have. Look, if you have one and you want to put it at the bottom of your pitch, I do that with my pitch. I'm like, hey, here's my one sheet. Here's an audio snippet. It's at the very bottom. It's just in one line and it's linked to the Google Drive where it's held because I never want to put an attachment in an email. So it has it in there. But y'all that are listening, if you don't have a one sheet, if you don't have these things, do not let that stop you from pitching because I have booked my clients on big shows, great shows, and I and, and they don't have a one sheet. It does not, in my opinion, make that big of a difference. It's a nice like credibility marker. Again, if you have it, but it's not something to me that's like a must have. What's a must have is solid topic ideas and taking the time to make those connections. Interesting. So what do you guys think? I, I mentioned they're probably like, no, we love one sheets. Okay. So I totally agree with you. I think that a nice PDF is, you know, nice and everything, but I just want helpful information, topic ideas, exactly. And then questions. I don't think you've mentioned that mm -hmm. yet, but give me the questions I can ask you. That's just like, people are lazy, right? I'm lazy. We're all lazy. I don't, you know, having to come up with my own questions where they're just there and it's you getting yeah. to talk about what you feel so great talking about make mm -hmm. make the podcast hosts or the producers life easy and that's what mm -hmm. one sheet can do that sure but if you just have that same information in email I don't care yep so I want to add my two cents on this coming from like a graphic design kind of yeah. perspective I personally love one sheets because I'm a very visual person and so while I might receive a pitch that's like a mile long I'll be like uh eh, first line last line like you know keywords of like where you've worked in the middle but like, whereas like a one sheet where it's like very visual, where I can like see your social media stats, I can see like places that you worked with that speaks to me a lot more. So it's like, you know, it might be a, a nice thing to have to speak to both learning styles. I don't know. That, that's kind of like my, my take on that. Well, I think that what you're saying is very true. And I do think that it's a, I do think that they're again, nice to have, like mm -hmm. if you have one, I would definitely include it in there. And really it's to that point. Like I said, I like to put it in there because there are people that do want to take a look at them. But what I don't want people to do is just send a one sheet, you know, to just be like, like, Hey, Megan, Hey, Lauren, you know, found the show really interested. Here's my one sheet. Let me know if you're interested. I don't think maybe you feel differently, but I don't think that that is going to get a host interested. They're going to want to hear from you. And, you know, again, that connection. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's where it kind of comes back to the customization. Like that's the thing that caught my eye about your pitch, right? Like, so obviously, you know, you're here. We're chatting. So, you know, something it caught worked. me on. It worked. I mean, like guys, I don't know how to like you, you know, say this to people like, so how I pitch is I pitch, I do what I call a pitch sprint. So that's how I pitch myself is one day a quarter I set aside and I send out a bunch of pitches. And then I do the follow-up two weeks later. Now, the reason that I do this is because for me, I work better just getting in the zone in one day, getting it all done, getting it all out there. There's some people that of course they prefer to do a couple hours a week or whatever, you know, it's all based on what you like to do. But 
but for me, I work really well on doing it this way because then I know, okay, now I can put my calendar two weeks later to do all my follow-up, which is super important. You guys don't, don't, don't forget to do your follow-up, but I do it in that particular way. And so for me, that just works, that just works really well. And you kind of have to figure out, yeah, what's best and what might make sense. So I think that that's, that's a great way to kind of lead us into our next question, which is like, how do you find the right podcast for your client or for yourself? Yeah. The way that we find the right clients or the way that I find the right clients is for me, I definitely like how I found Megan and found your sparkly brand was just through connection, right? Like I had been on this particular podcast with Deanna Seymour. I saw that she had also. So then I kind of went and looked and was like, oh, we probably have a similar ICA, like that solopreneur women, you know, that type of thing. So that's why I decided to reach out to her. So of course, like seeing what connection points you have with people is always a great place to start. I also like to ask my audience. So fairly regularly, I'll put something on my social or put it in my e-newsletter. Like, Hey, what are you guys listening to these days? Now, a lot of my followers know that I'm a big true crime drunk junkie. So they'll say, I almost said drunkie. I am not a true crime <laughs> drunkie, a true crime junkie. And so they'll send me stuff like that, which I of course love because I love to find that type of stuff too. I'll also get some gems in there of shows that I've maybe never heard of before, but stuff that they're listening to. And for me, that's perfect because that's my ideal customer that's already hanging out at whatever show this is. So that's a really low hanging fruit way to do it. The other thing that I recommend, I call it my podcast piggyback method, but essentially I find someone that has a similar ideal customer to me. So, you know, some would say a competitor, like if you want to look at it that way, you know, it doesn't have to be like a negative connotation, right? But someone that just does similar to what you do, I drop their name into iTunes and I see the shows that they've been on. So what I'll do there is see the shows that they've been on. I can pitch those shows with a different topic. I do that regularly. So there's other people that obviously do podcast pitching. So if I see that they've been on a show, I'll be, I can reach out to that show and be like, Hey, I saw you had so-and-so on. I loved the conversation you guys had, especially da, 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 da. What I'd love to do is come on and take your listeners to the next level of what they should be doing after their podcast interview or whatever it is that is that next level. And that works really, really well for me. The host has seen that you're paying attention to what they're doing. You're acknowledging that they've already had someone on and you're saying that you really loved the conversation that they had with that person. I'm not here to be like, like they didn't know what they're talking about. And, you know, let me come on and talk about whatever. Like, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm here, what we're trying to do here. So I'll do that. I can repitch those shows. And then also, if you guys have Apple Podcasts, I'm sure you've seen this. And I, I know you guys can't see this, but I have an actual timer because I will go down a rabbit hole. But scrolling down to the bottom of the shows that my competitors have been on and seeing what comes up for the You Might Also Like. So at the bottom of every iTunes page for each show, it'll kind of have, it'll populate with shows that have a similar audience, right? And so what I can do is go down there to the bottom. I can take a look. I can start to look at those shows and just come up with some new and different ideas there. Of course, like I want to go into the show. I want to take a look at it. That's why I have to set this timer, you guys, because I get way too into it. But that is a really great way to kind of start doing that research based off of where your competitors might have already shown up. Wow, that was so amazing. I feel like you just dropped a huge value bomb there. <laughs> So awesome. Yeah. I love it. Now, what would you say to someone who's maybe listening to this and is like, oh, I do want to get on podcasts, but I'm like feeling a little shy or nervous. Isn't maybe a super comfortable yeah. in public speaking yet. What would you say to them? Yeah, this, this comes up a lot. You know, people absolutely have mindset stuff around pitching themselves and, and then being an actual guest, you know, on podcasts, like pitching yourself step one, right? Like then, then we got to do the actual thing, you know? So definitely stuff pops up for people. And the there's a few things that I really like to say to people, but the main one really is like, what's the worst that can happen? So I like to have people visualize, like what, what do you truly think is the worst that can happen in this situation? And, you know, for most people, they kind of like, and this is what I'm talking about, either doing the pitch or doing the actual interview. What's the worst that can happen? And for most people, if I ask this question to them, you know, they kind of say something along the lines of like, well, what if I mess up? What if I say the wrong thing? Am I really the right person to be talking about this? First of all, these hosts that are out here, like even before this call, you know, Megan and Lauren were like, Hey, if something gets, if you want to start over saying something again, just let us know whatever, like it is not the end of the world. If you fumble over your words or you say something wrong, I just call myself a true crime drunkie. So <laughs> just remember that that's where we're all at. And honestly, for most people, they like those little, they don't mind. Like, it's not something that when I'm listening to a podcast, someone slips something up, it doesn't bother me because they're human. I'm human. I'm not expecting to, you know, listen to some 
someone that's never going to make a mistake or anything like that. So I kind of ask people this and they give me their answer. And then I say, well, if that happens, what do you think? What's the worst that could happen? You know, like you mess up on something or, or something like that happens. Like what, what really happens from that? And for most people, they're like, I guess, I, I, I guess like, I just know, and people will think I'm stupid. I don't know. They won't. I, I like to get that out to they're not, you mess up on a word, you mess up saying something like people really don't mind. You say something wrong. If you really say something that you're like, oh my God, I cannot have that go on air. Like you can obviously talk to the host and be like, can you please cut that out? Their hosts aren't out to get you. Okay. They, they also want to have great audience, great, great stuff for their show. And then what I'd like to ask people, the third question, or the third thing that I like to say is what if the worst thing you could do is to not put yourself out there. And I really, really want people to think about that because if you do not put yourself out there, and that's truly what I think is the worst thing you can do for your business, you will not get in front of new customers. You know, you will not be sharing your story and your voice and all these things with people that really, really want to hear from you. And so I think that we all have these fears. We all worry about messing up, but what in the long run is the big picture and the big thing that you're trying to do this for? And that third one just resonated with me so hard because like, I'm yeah. such, I'm such a firm believer in like, when you hold back, like when you hold yourself back, like when you're, you know, getting on a podcast, you know, doing a video for social media, like any of those types of things, if you're holding back, you are depriving your audience of like your knowledge, your personality, like they want all of that stuff. And so like, when you hold back, it's like, you're actually doing them a disservice. A hundred percent. I was listening to a podcast yesterday that I've been binging. I'm like binging. And this is what happens to guys. You binge podcasts, you find one you like, and then you're like, well, now I'm going to listen to the last nine months of this. And so I went in there and this is the type of experience your listener can have because I heard these people talk. And then I went and I literally wrote and scribbled out two pages of things that like had popped into my head. And that's all because they were brave enough to get out and share their voice and talk about their message. And so absolutely that's what's happening. Just like Megan said, like you're doing a disservice by not, you know, giving that knowledge to other people. For sure. So let's talk about, do you have any advice on how to translate podcast appearances into sales for someone's business? How do they do that? Yes, absolutely. I love this question because I do think that a lot of people, they kind of hit end on Zoom. Like, you know, they hit like end recording, something like that. And then they're kind of like, well, great, all done. You know, and then they kind of like step slowly back out of the of the frame. And what I really want is for you to realize that like, that's only like part one, essentially of getting, you know, increased revenue, getting sales, things like that from being a guest on podcast. There's obviously and absolutely people that are going to listen to you and join your list, follow you on social media, send you a DM. That stuff happens. It's great when that happens. It's awesome. But I also like to tell people like being a guest on podcast, you shouldn't expect it to be a huge list builder. It is going to get people onto your list. And the people that join your list are very, very warm, but it's not something that is like, suddenly you're going to have a thousand more people on your list. You know, unless you're maybe on Joe Rogan's podcast, maybe that would happen. I don't know. But you know, I, I like to make it clear that again, it's more about like that credibility, visibility, that type of stuff that's happening. So the people that do get on your list are going to be super warm, ready to go into your funnel. They're ready to engage, you know, for multiple of our clients, they're ready to just buy, you know, they might have a freebie and that then funnels them into, you know, something else and they're just buying. So that's certainly great. That's wonderful when that happens. But the kind of few other ways that I think you should be using this for sales is one, building that relationship with the host. So the relationship building with a host of the show that you're on is a huge, huge opportunity. And you're genuine in that you've listened to their show, you're interested in what it is they have to talk about, all that type of stuff. But just when you have a connection as being a podcast guest, and you'll know it, you know, Heather Sager puts it as like, you have one night stand sometimes with the host, then you have other hosts that you're like, all right, we're ready to take this a step further. You know, like you kind of, you kind of get to like different levels based on how you connect. And so when you kind of have that connection with a host, I mean, I, for that live train I have coming up, I have multiple people that are promoting it as affiliates for me. And most all of them are people that I met by being a guest on their show. They're people that I have continued to foster those relationships with. One of our biggest referral partners is someone that I was a guest on her show. So absolutely, that is a really important relationship. And the best way to kind of nurture that relationship, and this is a big thing that I like to harp on a lot, is like when I go into this episode, like today with Lauren and Megan, I'm going to it with an attitude of gratitude because it takes a lot of work to put on a podcast. 
to put out a podcast, to put it out into the world, to put it in you guys' little earbuds. And so for them to let me come on here and talk about my message, I'm very grateful for that. So the second that we hit end on Zoom or we hit end on record, I'm going to be asking them, how can I support you? And I think that that is a great, great attitude to have when you're a guest on shows to, again, kind of help that relationship along, but will hopefully help you down the road when they say, hey, I had so-and-so on my show. You know, someone asked them about something, they're able to really direct them over to you, which I think is great. The other thing that I would say is just content repurposing. Look at a podcast appearance as evergreen content. Our clients that do this and do this well, I think see a much better return on their investment. So what I mean by that is they're on a podcast, they chop it up into a bunch of audio clips, they make some Canva quote cards. They really, they put it on their website under media appearances. They send it out to their email list and they do that regularly. Like one of our clients, Luis, like he is putting regularly clips from him being on shows, even if he was on the show six months ago, even if he's already shared a clip before from that show, people are coming to you all the time. They haven't heard that clip yet. And people that maybe have heard it, they don't really care. They don't mind hearing it a second or third time. In fact, most of us don't listen to anything until we hear it, you know, what is it like seven times or something? So what I just really want to make clear is like, use that content. There's wonderful tools out there like Headliner and Canva that make it really easy for you to take an interview that you were on. You don't have to ask the host for anything. Like you don't have to ask them for a recording, anything like that. You can easily and free be chopping that up yourself and putting it out across all your channels. So what you just mentioned is actually what I wanted to ask you about tools and time-saving stuff and that kind of thing. You said Canva. Mm -hmm. Headliner, I'm not familiar with. What's that? Headliner is an amazing tool that does audio snippet. So like you you can put in and you can get like five free audio snippets a month through it. And it is like, they have a wizard that directs you through it. It is so easy. You just essentially put in the name of the show, pick the episode you want to do it from, and then you can just cut it up into chunks and it even makes the image. Oh, that's awesome. Those are great for like after an interview to use Canva and Headliner. I mean, Megan as a designer might have some other awesome tools that she would recommend as well. But those for me, just for people that aren't just like me, that are designers, those are really yeah. easy things that we could use. But when it comes to actually, you know, pitching or doing some research and stuff like that. There are some things out there like matchmaker.com, listen notes, that are some cool databases of shows that are looking for guests. So that's a great place for you to start that research. I was just turned on to listen notes and you can sign up for free. And it's really cool because we just started doing this for some of our clients. Like I can type in something like one of our clients, she's like a time management wizard, right? I can put in their time management and I can look at episodes that have to do with time management or have that in the keyword. I can look at shows that focus on time management. And what's really cool is you can save them and export it as a CSV. So that's a really cool place for you to start doing your research. I mean, I don't want you to, again, just spray and pray, go through, hit a bunch, send them, you know, with the thing, but it's a really good spot for you to start looking at shows, looking at that research and seeing what might be a good fit. So a a great time saver. I love that. I love a good export to CSV. So thank you for sharing that. So let's talk about like, if you could go back in time and tell your younger business self something, what would that be? Oh man. I think if I could go back in time, what I, what I truly would say, and I briefly hinted at this at the beginning is listen to what people want. Don't just try to make it what you want. And what I mean by that is I think I was so set on having this business be like where I was going to create courses and I was going to do these things. And eventually it turned out to that not being what my business has become, but I built my business how I want on it. So I think that that's, that's been really important. Then that's what I would say to myself is like, build it how you want it, but listen to what people are asking you for. And don't just stay in like, so stuck in like what you think it has to look like. I love that. Such good advice. And so if people want to give you money, you know, figure out how you can take it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier than trying to create something out of nothing is to just give people what they need. So you talked about your training, which is tomorrow you said? Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited. What other, Mm -hmm. do you have any other upcoming projects you want to share that you're excited about? Yeah, absolutely. So we kind of work with people in three ways. One is we have the do it yourself, which is this, hey, bitch, let's pitch training that I have live tomorrow. So I'm sure when this airs, it will have already gone live, but it is available for evergreen. Like people can get it. It has some extras and stuff on there too. We, I also offer a VIP day. So that's really made for people that are looking to like have a VA pitch on their behalf. So what we do there is we get them ready with all the assets. We do a training, you know, one-on-one training, all that type of good stuff so they can kind of take it and run with it. So that's what we do there. And then our main service that we offer is our podcast pitch broker service. And that's where we do the actual pitching on behalf of our clients, get them booked. Like 
like I mentioned, I'm very, very adamant about having a guarantee in that. So we guarantee a certain number of aligned bookings and we open up the cart for that three times a year. So our next one is in March where we're going to be opening up for new customers based on the number of spots we have. And then we'll be going again in July and October. And yeah, that's, that's the work where that we really get to get our clients out there and get their voices out there. And we get to be like little detectives. So, you know, find the shows that we think are going to be right for them and fit with that aligned audience and, and get them out there talking. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. This has just been, thank I feel you. like a, like a value packed episode and like lots of tangible tips that people can take from this. Can you tell people where to find you online? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a few ways to find me. One is on Instagram at publicity, Christina. I mean, it's publicity by Christina, but I thought I was being like real trendy with like the X, like South by Southwest, but it was like the bane of my existence right now. But yes, publicity X, Christina, Christina, find me on Instagram. Give me a shout. Uh, I would love, love to say hi. And then if you're kind of like, all right, I'm ready to take the, like, I want to figure out what might be the next best move for me when it comes to podcast pitching, then you can go to podcastpublicityquiz.com and figure out which of those three options might be the best step for you kind of based on where you are right now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Christina. Mm -hmm. We'll put links to all of that in the show notes. And we want to say thank you to our listeners for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and be sure to subscribe so you never miss one. Until next time, stay sparkly.